Hey guys, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories! We are on the start screen for some odd reason because I just started a new recording session. Yeah, that's right, after all that grinding I didn't want to just jump back into the game, call me crazy. But yeah, um, I don't know, usually I am so far ahead with these recordings of these Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes, but... Um, yeah, in case you guys didn't see in the description of the last episode, I did about... Um, 25 hours of grinding to get the cards necessary to build this monster beast of a deck we have now and I'll show you just how beastly I went um, so pretty much what happened is I, I tried to fight Haishin a few times and I lost as I said in the low meadow mage episode lost 11 times I thought I could beat him and maybe get one really good card but uh, that didn't happen I fought Pegasus a few times I lost to him quite a bit um, before I had any good cards and I could I thought I could try to S tech him before I should have been trying and I lost him but I did end up s him a few more times. I also fought Mage Soldier a few times. Uh, didn't get anything good, so I decided to stop dueling him. And then Jono second. As you can see, I dueled him 114 times, and I lost five. That's before I unlocked Low Meadow Mage, and I still had sucky cards. And no Red Eyes Black Dragon, which was the only card I wanted from him, was the Red Eyes Black Dragon. He also has a very low chance of giving off Meteor B Dragon, but I wasn't specifically going for that. I was going for Red Eyes, because this is the only guy in the game you can win Red Eyes from. And he is good for a lot of fusions. You can even fusion him to make red eyes or uh, meteor black dragon. So that's what I wanted from him. Didn't happen though. Now this is the most important guy, Meadow Mage, Low Meadow Mage. As you can see, I dueled him 139 times, and that is where I got most of my good cards from. Uh, in case I didn't show everything in the montage, which I know I didn't because I already edited it, uploaded it, and everything, I'm gonna show you my deck here and just explain where we got everything, just like last time. So let's check it out. Now, Garuzis I got from Jono second. He is a good warrior type. Uh, you know, in case we fight, when we fight the Meadow Mages, he will gain an attack bonus and have 2300 attack. Plus, I have two Kunai with chains in my deck. Oh, wait, you know what? This isn't even my deck. But I do have a Garuzis in my deck, so. Anyways, um, as you can see now, I've loaded my deck with a bunch of dragons. Uh, Blackland Fire Dragon I've gotten here. He's under 1600 attack, as are these three Kamuri Dragons, all which I won from low meadow mage uh, so you know those are they're just nice to have and they're good for fusing uh, flaming swordsman I got these from Jonah second good warrior type guy benefits from Sogan field time wizard you know good for the thousand dragon fusion and I got two dark magicians one of the best cards in the game from meadow mage and it's actually not that rare of a drop so you can get these guys pretty easily that was nice I also got Gaia the fierce knight well just one of them which I was super excited about because he's a strong knight type as you can see and I also got three curse of dragons now the reason I'm excited is because if you fuse Gaia the fierce knight and curse of dragons specifically these cards you will get Gaia the dragon champion which has 2600 attack and he is not a dragon type I believe he's a warrior type so I'm pretty sure you can equip him with like can have a chain and stuff I don't know I'm not too sure, but that's just a good fusion, 2600 attack. And then Garuzis, I already explained that. Giant Soldier of Stone, I pretty much just use these two guys to replace the other crap rock monsters in my deck, because this guy has 2000 defense, so he's kind of a good wall, and therefore I can still make the Mystical Sand fusions. Dragon Zombie is very good for the uh, fusion, so he's going to stay. This is probably my weakest card, La La Leon, but I'm going to keep him because he's one of my few Thunder type monsters. Flame Ghost, he is the only flame monster I have left in my deck, and the only reason I'm keeping him is because if you combine a fire, I can still make the flame Cerberus fusion, and if I combine a flame monster with uh, um, any bird type monster, which I do have the Skull Bird card in my deck now, it will make Crimson Sunbird, which has 2300 attack, and that's a still a good fusion to make at this point in the game. Dragon Treasure, we still have that. Um, Yami, the only reason I have this in my deck, it doesn't really benefit too many of my monsters. It benefits uh, Dark Magician and Skull Knight, but mainly I have it in here just to counter Sogan for when. Uh, Low Meadow Mage played it, that way he wouldn't get the field benefit. I might replace it with Sogan soon because that benefits me a lot more. Um, Dark Hole, still got that. Jirai Gumo, been there. Para Dragon, got that with the uh, 290 Star Chips. Metal Dragon, I won from Low Meadow Mage, I believe. And Kaminari Attack, you can also win these from Low Meadow Mage. I got one with the passwords, as you saw. And then the other two, I won from Low Meadow Mage. So, pretty much one of the best Thunder Monsters you can have in the game. And if you fuse him with any dragon, since he's over 1600 attack, no matter what attack the dragon has, you will get a Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. So, very useful for my 1500 attack dragons. Also, one Vermilion Sparrow here, which is a commonly fused uh, card. And it's got 1900 attack, so that's good. 
Flower Wolf is a beast type, so we can use him to make a Neko Gall number two and Flame Cerberus still, and also he's got a good attack at 1800. Brachio Radius, I really like this guy. He is a dinosaur type, so not too good for fusions, but he has 2200 attack, so that's awesome. Uh, Skullbird, I use that for the Crimson Sunbird fusion, plus he's got a decent attack, 1900. Warrior of Tradition, she's got a good attack at 1900, benefits from the Sogan field. And then I've got a Kunai with Chain and two Bright Castles, which I want from S Teching Pegasus. Very useful card, you can equip it to any monster, and it will increase its attack and defense by 500, so totally worth it. I want to get another one of those, but you know. And then Widespread Rune, I also won this from Pegasus. Uh, when an opponent's monster attacks, it is blown to smithereens and eliminated from the playfield. So this is a trap card. Whenever you set it face down, the next monster that tries to attack anything on your side of the field will die and get destroyed. So good card. And then Skull Knight, I also won this from Low Meta Mage. I was really surprised because this is a very rare drop from him, actually, and I got two of them. Uh, Skull Knight is... shit. Go back in there, dude. I was in the mode. Skull Knight is one of the most powerful standalone cards in the game. It's uh, pretty crazy, actually. He is stronger than the Dark Magician and any other card in my deck, almost stronger than the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon at 2650 attack and 2250 defense, and he also benefits from my Yami field, taking him up to 3150, which is enough to destroy the, you know, uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon, and then if you throw a few of our equips on him, he's good to go, and he is also equipable with Kunai with Chain, so we can technically equip him with all three of these and benefit him with Yami, and that will take him up to past 4,000 attack, and that is ridiculous. And then also this card that I'm very proud that I won, I got this from Low Meadow Mage actually, or did I get this from, no yeah, I got this from Low Meadow Mage, the Meteor Dragon. So this is the lower fusion part of Meteor B Dragon, and now all we have to do is get a Red Eyes Black Dragon, and if you fusion it with Meteor Dragon here, you'll get Meteor Black Dragon, one of the strongest monsters in the game, obviously. So that's why I was trying really hard to get the... Meteor B Dragon, but we didn't get it, but I'm still going to keep this guy in my deck because he's got very good defense, decent attack, and he's Dragon type, still good for fusing for Thunder Dragon. Okay, now that I've wasted your time explaining that, you guys can skip it if you want, I suppose. Um, let's get back into the game. I actually want to check my Starships here because we are getting a lot of Starships from the battles. Yeah, I have 762. Um, we're getting up there. We can even get some decent cards with these Starships, like some really good cards. I'm going to check some of that off screen in between episodes, see if I can buy anything really good. But let's get into campaign. Um, I might do some off-screen grinding just like randomly, and uh, I'll probably record it just in case I get anything good, but I'm going to try to be randomly dueling here and there between episodes to try to get that Red Eyes Black Dragon, because I would really like to get that. That would make our deck very good, and we do want to do maybe just one more grinding after, um, in between now and the end of the game. So I'm going to leave the shop. Thank you, fat man. So we have officially missed Villager 3. The only time you can fight him is the first time you go to the duel grounds in the beginning of the game. But there is, we still can't get everybody else from here on out. Um, there is one person that is easily missable at this point in the game, and that is Seto 2. Usually most people just miss him and go straight to Seto 3rd. But we can't fight him right now anyway. So now we have all these shrines open up to us, and we can fight pretty much whoever we want. Now I would go for the Meadow Shrine since I'm pretty sure we can beat the Low Meadow Mage. Obviously I've beaten him 150 times. But uh, that's without the field being changed, because in story mode they automatically get their field bonus at the beginning of the battle, whereas in free duel they don't. But the high meadow mage is actually really difficult, and I'm not too sure I want to fight him right now. Um, I could go for mountain shrine, because my dragons would benefit from the... What the fuck are you doing, PS3, dude? You're gonna break. Weird, man. Anyway, my, you know, my guys would definitely benefit from the field, but of course so do they. But you know what? I'm just gonna go for it anyway. I think we're gonna go to the meadow shrine. The high, med the high mage here has some ridiculous cards that he could pull on us, almost to the point where we can't win. Scoop, you won't win this time. Winning! I actually will win. So let's just duel this guy. I could put that second Garuzis in my deck, I don't know. See, and this is where my warriors are awesome in play, because now they will gain 500 attack points. So if we get like a Skull Knight on the first turn, which we didn't, but if we did, if we would have, he would have gotten, you know, um, what do you call it? 500 attack bonus, he'd be at 3150 attack rate. So I'm going to change the field to Yami, see what he does here. Chances are he's just going to change it right back to Sogan. But what that's going to do is give me another free turn, because he won't set anything down to draw another card that's hopefully better. Oh no, he's going to fusion, holy shit. Oh yeah, Judge Man, that's fine. 2200 attack actually isn't that bad compared to the 27 he would have if he was on Sogan field. So that's his strongest monster attack wise. And look at this, since we now have the uh, Yami field, it powers up Dark-type monsters, which 
Skull Knight is, and now he will destroy Judge Man. And he's got the Guardian Star because the dude has Sun, and we have Mercury, which defeats Sun. So there you go, 3650, boom! 1450, bitch. Judge that. Yeah! And we are winning. Actually, we're losing. Holy crap. And he got some direct damage there. So, yeah, Judge Man is his strongest offense card with Sogan in play. That's 2,700 attack. So if you can summon a Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon and don't put it in Moon because he is Sun, put it in Pluto, then you'll be fine. But if you Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, the reason it's kind of iffy in this battle is because if you give it the Pluto Guardian Star, his Empress Judge, which will have 2,100 attack, 26 with the field bonus, will be good against you and be able to destroy you. And if you put it in Moon, his Judge Man will have 2,700 attack with Sogan and be able to kill it as well. So you're kind of screwed. But you know what? Not a big deal, man. So, I'm going to combine Flaming Swordsman here, which I believe counts as Fire-type, and this guy to make Crimson Sunbird. There we go. Yeah. So that's that fusion. And now that I have the Flame Swordsman in my deck, I, pr I could get rid of Flame Ghost, but I don't really have any other better cards to replace it at this point, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Alright, Crimson Sunbird. Yes, and Satsu should be able to take care of that guy, and let's get 3150 direct damage. Now we're definitely winning... I mean, our deck is just so awesome now. But, you know, these high mages, the low mages really aren't too much trouble. Uh, they're, they're, I, I have no delusion that we will ever lose to them. But these high mages are just so ridiculously overpowered. These are like some of the hardest enemies in the game we're getting up to here, the high mages. Even with this crazy attack, like 3300 I've got right here. They have monsters that have way upwards of that. So, yeah. And as you guys may have seen in the free duel, this guy has uh, Millennium Shields. He has uh, up to two or three of them, I'm not sure. So those have 3,000 defense, so that could be hard to penetrate. Um, but if he's on Sogan Field, they have 3,500 defense, which is where I had most of my trouble in free dueling. But if you can uh, just change the field and get something over 3,000 attack, like either of these guys, or just use, use equip cards if you need to and try to get over 3,500 attack, or beat his Guardian Star, which will always be Uranus. So you can beat that with... Uh, Saturn. So, get us pick the Saturn Guardian Star, and you should be okay. And we get Winged Trumpeteer, which is an equip card. I believe you use that for uh, elf. No, not elf monsters. That's Mystical Light. That's fairy monsters. Yeah, it's an equip card for fairy monsters that will raise their attack. Scope, you'll regret this victory, for you'll be facing the power of High Mage Kapura. Yeah, we've seen this all before, so I'm gonna proceed. I think, pretty sure High Mage Kapura is gonna kick our ass. So how this works, these shrines each have two guardians, as you can see, the low guardian and the high guardian. So this is the high guardian. Once you beat the high guardians, you will gain the millennium item they are guarding. So we're going for one right now. I guess that's why these guys are so hard. And dude, what's up with the fuck with your ears? You can't even hear anything, bro. I am the guardian of the plates. I am High Mage Kapura. You are the protector of light, the owner of the millennium puzzle. A millennium item is not for the likes of you. It must never be yours. The millennium item is Master Haishin's and our key to world domination. First, I will defeat you. Then, I will take your Millennium Puzzle and offer it to Master Haishin. Prepare to defend yourself. Alright guys, and now we're going to face High Mage Kapura, one of the toughest enemies in the game in my opinion, because he has some of the uh, strongest standalone cards. Actually, is it the strongest? No, second strongest standalone card in the game is in his possession. And most of the time, he'll be summoning it on the first turn. Not only that, but I'm pretty sure it gains the field bonus from Sogan, so that will take it. That will just make it ridiculously strong. Okay, so I'm going to just try to go all out here. We're going to summon Skull Knight with the uh, Kunai with Chain, 3150. That will be difficult for him to defeat, but if he summons that strong monster I was talking about, he can easily do it. Yeah, these guys have cards like Gate Guardian. Uh, I'm pretty sure he got Gate Guardian there, yeah. So that's his strongest monster, and of course he summoned it on the first turn. Gate Guardian, 3750 standalone attack. On Sogan, 4250 attack. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm pretty sure we've lost at this point, guys, once he's already summoned to this guy. So, um, if you can, just get rid of every possible card you have in a futile attempt to summon something that might be able to defeat this guy. But I'm pretty sure we've lost. There's not really anything we can summon. The only way we can kill his Gate Guardian is if we get, like, all the perfect cards that we can use to, um, power up a monster strong enough to defeat him. Oh, and he's going to equip it with a card. Oh, Sword of Dark Destruction. 4750. Now we're screwed. The only way we can kill this guy is with the Dark Hole. Also, Regekis are good cards you want to try to get. You can get that from S-Teching uh, Shaddy, but I didn't really want to spend the time to do that. Okay, we didn't get Dark Hole. Looks like we might get our fucking asses kicked here. Um, Ball Sack. What do I do here? I don't want to waste any of these. Uh, Balls of the Wiener. 
Like, I want to use this, because then that'll power down his guy, but then he's just going to summon... <sighs> Ballsack. You know what, fuck it, let's just... I don't really have much time, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty much screwed anyway, so... Yeah, these. I, in my opinion, the High Mages have a little bit too powerful cards for these point in the game, because there's no way you can get monsters to defeat these guys unless you get lucky and win the Meteor B Dragon. And if you don't win the Meteor B Dragon, which is one of the, this is the hardest card to win in the game, percentage-wise, then there's nothing you can do. Ooh, he might be able to kill his Gate Guardian here, he <laughs> with a trap. That's a trap! But if he has one more monster with 2650 attack, we're dead anyway, so... Oh, Harpy's Feather Duster. Fuck you, game. Fuck you. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. So, you know what? I'm glad I got to show this, because now you just know how big of a cheater these guys are. Look at this shit. Uh, and it's co and it is game over once you lose here, so any progress you may have gained is therefore a loss. So if you want a really good card from the low Meadow Mage, I suggest you just return and save, because if you lose to the High Mage, you're going to lose that card. So, whatever. Anyways, I'm going to fight the Low Mage again. <sighs> I really don't think fighting High Mage Kabura first is a good idea, but it's not like we're going to get any better cards in between now and then that are going to make us better against him. We've just got to get lucky draws, and he's got to get shitty draws. That's really the only way you can win. It's almost crazy how much luck they expect you to have in this point of the game. This is when it gets like really hard. There's like the only way, like I said, the only way you can have monsters strong enough to defeat his Gate Guardian is if you have a Meteor B Dragon and you choose the Mars, Merc the symbol, and then that will be good against him. So that'll raise you to 4,000 attack, which would kill his 3750. However, he's on the Sogan field. So not only do you have to summon the strongest monster in the game, you can possibly have, but you have to equip it or, you know, take his Sogan out, and he always gets it on the first turn, too, so you have almost no time to build up a defense. It's just, I don't know. I mean, I can understand, like, endgame enemies having these cards, which they have better cards than this, it's crazy as that may sound, but just, like, these are, like, you know, end bosses. Like, we're talking, like, if I were to make an OOT analogy, this is, like, you know, the freaking Water Temple or the uh, Shadow Temple bosses doing like 10 hearts of damage like that's what it is because he has we have 8,000 life points and he's doing over half that with his attacks so it's like you know really that's how we're gonna play right now but you know whatever if fucking Morpha did 10 hearts of damage each hit you'd be fucked I mean you know alright so what have we got here I'm just gonna go for the I'm gonna save Curse of Dragon for the guy Dragon Champion combo and we'll just go with a uh, Twin Headed Thunder Dragon here uh, and I guess we'll just pray, even though it's pretty futile, we'll just pray that he doesn't summon... Oh no, wait, we're fighting low Meadow Mage here, aren't we? Holy shit. For some reason I'm in High Mage Kapura mode still. Okay, that has the Mars Mercury Star, so the good thing is we know it's not um, the Millennium Shield, so we know we're not going against 3500 defense, which is good, I suppose. That's always, you know, refreshing. Alright, so you're gonna die, Flame Swordsman. Ah, uh, interesting. It's funny, too, because when you fight him in Free Duel, which when you're trying to win the good cards, he always fucking gets his, you know, Millennium Shield in the first Oh, go Millennium Shield! Eh, eh. Yeah, you puss. You puss. But you'll always win against these guys' better cards in Free Duel, because, like I said, the field is automatically normal, so they won't have that advantage right off the bat. But usually, on the first turn, what he will do is he will play Sogan, which is good, because then he has nothing on the field, and you can get, like, two direct attacks in, which is why it's really easy to beat him in Free Duel. Whereas here, it's a little bit tougher. Because if you want to change the field back to something else, I mean, there's no way to get it back to normal once it's changed. But if you want to change it to something else, you're going to have to waste one of your turns doing it, so... Well, what the hell? Whoa, that was weird. It, like, glitched out for a second. I don't know if that's going to show in the recording, but holy shit. Oh my fucking god!